In this video, I'm going to give a simple explanation of polymorphism and dynamic binding. Two words that sound complicated and can be complicated, but let's see if we can figure it out in just a couple minutes. So first of all, let's say we have a class called vehicle, and it has a method called drive and a method called go, and the method called drive invokes the method called go. Now, we can extend this into a class called Prius, and the class called Prius inherits the method called drive. That is, it doesn't have its own method called drive, it simply gets that from the superclass. However, Prius overrides the method called go, which means it has a method with the same name and same parameter list as the superclass. So this is where the question of polymorphism and dynamic binding comes in. The first case is fairly straightforward. Let's say we declare a new variable of type vehicle and give that variable name v, and we assign to it an object of type vehicle. And then we invoke v.go. Which go method is going to be invoked? The go method in vehicle. Now, what if we call v.drive? Well, there is only one drive method, and it's going to invoke go, and which go method? Well, they're all going to be invoked up in this class called vehicle, because that is the object type and the variable type. Now, when we have an object type that's different from the variable type, that's where the concept of polymorphism and dynamic binding comes in. So, the object type can be the same as the variable type, or it can be an object of a subclass of the variable type, or it can be an object of a class that implements an interface where the interface is the variable type. So either the same type or some kind of direct descendant, but it can't be completely different. So let's say that we have our uh, vehicle V as the variable, and Prius is the subclass here, which is the object that we're creating. Well, polymorphism tells us that the variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call, and the object type tells you what's going to happen when you call those methods, polymorphism. So this is an example of polymorphism. If I invoke go on a variable of type vehicle, but an object of type Prius, which of these go methods will be invoked? Well, it's going to be the one on the object type because the, remember the object tells you what's going to happen when you call the method. So there we go, we have the method go being invoked. Now let's take a look at a tricky case, which is essentially dynamic binding. Remember that Prius is inheriting drive and overriding go. Remember that drive invokes go. So what happens when we invoke the drive method on a variable of type vehicle and an object of type Prius? Well, remember, object type tells us what will happen when we call those methods. So it's going to invoke the inherited method drive. That's the one that's available to it. But which go method is going to be invoked in this case? So we invoke drive, that calls go, and which go method actually gets called? The go method down here in Prius is the one that gets invoked. So that's, a, that's a, a very important case, but a tricky one. If you invoke an inherited method, and that method invokes a method that you are overriding, and you are the object type, then the one that you are overriding is going to get invoked, even though the inherited method uh, is the one that was called initially. So that essentially is dynamic binding. I hope this explanation helps a little bit. I have several videos where I go through code demonstrations in the debugger. Uh, if you'd like to see that, I'd encourage you to take a look at that, and that might help to cement that. So I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.